This skill video will show you how to perform a walk around routine maintenance inspection. This skill requires two firefighters, one to inspect and document results and one to assist. While more than one person may be involved with the inspection, all defects must be reported to a single lead person and documented. You should complete this skill while wearing appropriate personal protective equipment. Set up the inspection area. Park the apparatus outdoors if weather permits. If indoors, be sure that proper ventilation equipment is in place or doors are open to vent vehicle exhaust. Diesel exhaust may contain up to 100 harmful chemicals and compounds. Do not run these engines in unvented areas for any period of time. Chalk the vehicle's wheels. Begin inspection when approaching the vehicle. Look for readily apparent damage. Look beneath the vehicle for spots that indicate leakage. Look for unusual leaning that indicates chassis defects. Check the side of the cab and mirrors for any damage. Check the cab doors to ensure that they are in proper working order. Ensure that the doors close tightly. Ensure that the latch works as it was designed and that it operates with little or no play. Check that all door and window glass is intact and clean. Check that all steps, platforms, handrails, and mirrors are securely mounted and not deformed. Check that the equipment in the rear portion of the cab is all on board and complete in proper working order and securely stowed. Note any obvious body damage that has occurred since the previous inspection. Check the condition of the tire slash wheel assemblies on the side of the vehicle. Check that there are no missing, bent, or broken studs, lugs, or clamps. Ensure that the lug nuts are tight. Check that there are no cracks or damage that would prevent the sealing of the tire to the rim. Check to see that the front splash guards or mud flaps are in place and secure. Check for unusual accumulations of brake dust, metal flake, and corroded metal flake accumulations or trails on the wheel or in adjacent areas. Check that there are no trails of fluid on the wheel or tire indicating axle gear oil leaks. Visually inspect the suspension components found behind the left and right wheels. Look for defects involving the torsion bars, springs, spring hangers, shackles, U-bolts, shock absorbers, or mounting hardware. Check for springs with cracked, otherwise broken, or missing leaves. Check that there is no spring deflection when the vehicle is on a level surface. Check that tires are properly inflated using a pressure gauge and checking the reading against pressure recommended by the apparatus manufacturer on the federally required apparatus GVWR sticker. Check tire valve stems and valve stem caps for cracks or looseness. Check tires. Check for proper tire type as listed on the sidewall of the tire and federally required GVWR sticker. Inspect the tread. Verify that the tread does not show excessive wear or damage. Check that there is no tread separation or excessive sidewall wear. Be sure that there are no cuts or objects impaled in the tire. Check for bulges greater than 3 eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters per NFPA regulation 1911. Check retread tires for tread separation. Make sure the splash guards are in place, properly attached, and in good condition. Check all equipment compartments. Check that all equipment that is supposed to be in each compartment is actually there, properly stowed, and in operating condition. Check that the compartment lights are operating. 
ensure that the compartment and equipment it contains are neat and clean. Make sure that each compartment door opens and closes properly and latches tightly. Examine any hose stored in or on the side of the vehicle. Ensure that the hose is secure and properly stowed. Check any auxiliary extinguishing agent systems. Check the agent level. Check the propellant pressure. Check that any equipment stored on the exterior of the vehicle is in good physical condition and is properly stowed. Ensure that the reflective striping on the side of the apparatus is in good condition. Second firefighter, operate the side warning light switch in the cab, calling out to the inspecting firefighter when activated. Check the side mounted warning lights. Make sure that they are functioning properly, that all bulbs are working, and that lenses are in place and not cracked or broken. Batteries give off explosive hydrogen gas. Ventilate the area when servicing. Wear safety goggles and acid-resistant gloves. Exploding batteries can injure or kill. If the apparatus has unsealed batteries, carefully remove the caps and check the electrolyte water level. Add distilled water or water recommended by the manufacturer to cells if the electrolyte level is low. Check all battery connections. Tighten any loose connections. Clean away any corrosion around terminals with a mixture of baking soda and water poured on the connections, scrubbed with a wire brush, and rinsed with clear water. If the batteries are washed, dry the batteries to prevent parasitic current. Clean road debris, dirt, dust, and moisture from the top of the batteries to prevent any bleed of current from terminal to terminal that can result in electronics issues. Check the battery tie-downs, ensuring that the battery is held firmly in place. Check the built-in battery charger if the apparatus is so equipped, ensuring proper operation. Check the rear bumper area for any undocumented damage. Second firefighter, operate all rear running and emergency light switches in the cab one at a time, calling out switch type to the inspecting firefighter. Check all running and emergency lights as they are activated. Be sure that they are functioning properly, that all bulbs are working, and that lenses are in place and not cracked or broken. Check the brake lights and reverse lights. Check that the rear compartment doors open and close properly. Check that any equipment stored on the outside of the rear of the apparatus is in proper working order and is securely stowed. Ensure that any towing attachments are free of defects. Test and inspect all onboard hydraulic, pneumatic, and electric racks or devices for proper operation. Check rear steps, handrails, and platforms for security and damage. Check the foam tank level.
check the water tank level. Check the auxiliary tank level if so equipped. Check roof mounted piping. Check roof mounted equipment. Check lights and light towers for damage and proper function. Floodlights are extremely bright. Firefighters should not look directly at them when in close proximity. Check the siren for damage and proper function. Check the roof turret for damage and proper function. Visually check the roof for damage or corrosion. Repeat prior steps as applicable from rear corner to front corner for the side that has not yet been inspected. Approach the front of the vehicle noting any body damage not present in previous inspections. Look beneath the vehicle, noting any obvious damage to the brakes, front axle, steering system, or pump piping if present. Note any loose, bent, worn, damaged, or missing parts. Check that the windshield is free of defects and is clean. Check that the wiper blades are held appropriately against the windshield, are intact, and are in good condition. Start the apparatus engine or hook the apparatus to the electrical charging system. Second firefighter, operate all front running and emergency light switches in the cab one at a time, calling out switch type to the inspecting firefighter. Check all front running and emergency lights as they are activated, ensuring that they are functioning properly. All bulbs are working, and that lenses are in place and not cracked or broken. Visually inspect any audible warning devices on the front of the vehicle, electric siren speakers, mechanical sirens, and air horns. Check the bumper turret if so equipped. Check that air slash hydraulic lines are intact. If equipped with a low attack nozzle, make sure that it freely goes up and down in a normal functioning manner. Check that any front loaded hose is properly loaded and secure for road travel. Check that the nozzles are clean and in place. If a variable pattern slash flow nozzle is used, the pattern adjustment moves freely and the bale opens and closes with ease. Document the inspection and any maintenance actions and report any deficiencies per local policy.